REITs are today priced at their lowest valuations in many years. The investment firm Janus and Henderson recently came out with a study on REIT valuations and they concluded that the discount to NAV is at today quite similar to the levels of the great financial crisis at right around 30%. What this essentially means is that you get to buy real estate through the publicly listed REIT market today at roughly 70 cents on the dollar net of debt and so this is the reason why I've been buying a lot of REITs lately. But that does not mean that every REIT is cheap. On the contrary, there are quite a few that remain overpriced. And in today's video, I want to highlight two of them to you. Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And before we get into the first trade, I wanted to quickly remind you that we currently are offering a two week free trial for my REIT newsletter, Hired Landlord. So if you want to accept my entire portfolio, feel free to check it out. I'll book the link somewhere in the description of this video. So the first REIT that I would probably sell if I own today is called Iron Mountain. Sticker symbol is IRM. This is a REIT that owns mostly paper storage facilities. And it's also today rapidly expanding into the data center business. It's performed extraordinarily well over the past 18 months. It's one of the few REITs that has actually seen its share price increase in value even as the rest of the REIT market collapsed. I think that this is especially surprising because Iron Mountain has more leverage than average. It also has a riskier business than most other REITs given that it's focusing mostly on paper storage which is not a growth sector, it's probably going to eventually suffer a secular decline. And then third, it's now also expanding into data centers, which are out of favor at the moment. You can just look at the share price of uh, Digital Realty, which is the biggest data center REIT. It has even underperformed the average of the REIT sector. So with that in mind, I really struggle to understand what the market is seeing here, why it's getting so excited about Iron Mountain. Currently, it's priced at a premium relative to even Digital Realty, which is the blue chip data center. REIT. I think that it should be the opposite. Iron Mountain should be priced at a discount given that the bulk of its business today remains paper storage, which is not exactly a growth sector. I'm not one of those who believe that paper storage is going anywhere anytime soon, but I think that the big risk here is that if the organic growth turns even slightly negative, let's say it goes from positive 1% to negative 1%, I fear that this could very negatively impact the market sentiment of Iron Mountain because the market is very quick to extrapolate recent trends very far into the future and so this could be a strong catalyst for downside if we see a reversal in the organic growth from positive to even slightly negative. And so for this reason at today's valuations I think that the risk reward is relatively poor especially compared to some other REITs that are available in today's market. Before I go into the second rate, could you please do me a huge favor and like this video that will help me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you very much. And then the second REIT that I would probably sell is called Tanger Factory Outlet, ticker symbol SQT. This is the biggest outlet center REIT in the US market. It's also done exceptionally well over the past year or year and a half. Its share price has kept on increasing even as the rest of the REIT market collapsed. Once more, I think that this is especially surprising because if you look at the share price of Simon Property Group as an example, which is the biggest mall rate in the US, it has actually dropped a lot as well. It has dropped just as much as the rest of the REIT sector or even more. And so this disconnect between Tanger and Simon Property Group is very surprising. Both enjoy very, fairly similar fundamentals. Both have greatly benefited from the reopening of the world and from the recovery from the pandemic. But for some reason, that I in your Tanger's share price has benefited a lot more than that of Simon Property Group and as a result today's price at a premium relative to Simon despite having more leverage, a weaker credit trading and assets that in my opinion are going to do worse in the long run. I've talked about this previously on this channel in a separate video but in short I think that outlet centers are going to underperform class A malls in the long run because typically they don't enjoy as good of a location. They're typically located uh, perhaps 30 minutes outside of the big city. So it's, it's a destination you have to drive to get there. So far people were willing to take the drive because they were promised lower prices. But if you're just competing on prices you're probably going to suffer in the long run as concepts like TJ Maxx keep on, keep on growing. Uh, E-commerce is probably going to eat into your market share. Class A malls on the other hand they are located in really the prime locations. Uh, they have great demographics surrounding them and, and they 
the layouts also more flexible so they are able to diversify their uses they are becoming more resilient to e-commerce and they're not just competing on prices i think this is very important in the long run and for this reason i think that a read like simon property group should trade at a meaningful premium relative to tanger factory outlet but since we are seeing the opposite in today's market i think that the risk to reward of tanger is relatively poor and that of simon is relatively good and so for this reason i would probably sell tanger factory outlet if i own shares today i think that its valuation is still reasonable i don't think it's excessive but i think that that of simon property group is a lot more opportunistic and so since my capital is limited i'll probably consider selling tanger reinvest the proceeds into simon if you want to keep exposure to the retail read segment of the market and if you're looking for opportunities outside of the retail segment i've filmed plenty of videos on this channel on various read opportunities that i'm buying today so these are two reads that i would sell if i own them today there are quite a few others that i would sell uh, the read sector is one where it's very important to be very selective and so as a reminder if you want to access my full read portfolio feel free to join my read newsletter for a two week free trial I'll put a link somewhere in the description of this video and otherwise if you could please like this video that will really help me a lot to grow this channel thank you very much and see you on my next one bye bye